So I'm uh, Alex Pouget. I'm a computational neuroscientist uh, currently at uh, University of Geneva. Yeah, that's a classic question and an interesting one. What's interesting is that we're still asking the question today in 2016. Uh, we're talking about trying to understand a system that's composed of 70 billion neurons and about 700 trillion connections, uh, not to mention um, 20, 30 type of neuromodulator, neurotransmitters, probably hundreds of uh, receptors. So the complexity is just beyond anything we've ever approached. And so the notion that we could possibly understand this without a massive theoretical uh, input into the system is almost a joke. And I'm still surprised that we have to argue this particular point. Yes, yeah, so this is actually a discussion that we often have at conferences, is whether theory really had an impact in neuroscience so far. Um, and I find that quite remarkable, because if you really take a good look at any neuroscience book today, you will see that theory permeates every single aspect of neuroscience, so much so that we don't even know it, we don't even realize it. Um, if, you get, if you take any topic in neuroscience and you ask yourself, what do I know about this topic? How do I explain to somebody how this function actually works at a neural level? You quickly realize that you're going to be talking about theory almost more so than the actual data because that's how you explain things is with theory. So as an example, perhaps we can talk about memory. We're all very excited about the synaptic hypothesis for memory. We all believe that to a large extent uh, learning and memory relies on changing synaptic contact and has to do with something like HEP rule or variation of HEP rule. So why do we think it's exciting? We think it's exciting because uh, theoreticians have actually studied what HEP rule does and in its very simple uh, version, linear networks, it does PCA. In a nonlinear version, it does ICA, independent component analysis, which is a powerful uh, unsupervised form of learning. Uh, if you have supervised signal, then you end up with gradient descent type of learning rule, delta rule, or the not so biologically pl plausible uh, backprop, but nonetheless, which is still about synaptic learning. And what we know is that once you train networks with those kind of learning rules, you can get them to perform uh, absolutely incredible tasks. And nowadays, everybody's talking about the deep learning networks that are matching human performance on pattern recognition. That's why we're excited about LTP. You can spend all your life trying to potentiate a synapse with a hundred different protocols and those papers are out there. The reason we do it is because we understand the theoretical consequences of what it means. So I think that's a critical question and I think that is the question for the future. That's the most challenging one because there I think we, we need a cultural revolution. We have to completely change the mentality of neuroscience today. Everybody pays lip service to the idea that we need theory. I think we're at the point where at least we no longer have to, ar have to argue about whether theory is useful to neuroscience. Uh, but now we need to take a hard look at the numbers. Numbers are how many theoreticians do we have in the field? Uh, most departments will have maybe one theoretician. In fact, the vast majority of the neuroscience departments in the US or in the world have no theoreticians. If you're a grad student in neuroscience, how many neuroscience, um, I'm sorry, how many theory courses are you going to take? Well, maybe you'll take one computational neuroscience course. With one course versus 10 experimental courses, one course, you're supposed to suddenly absorb all the major theoretical con concepts that we're currently using in neuroscience. That's just impossible, particularly when your degree was in neuroscience, a time during which you probably didn't take a single math course except some very basic ones. Um, so how can we hope to really have a big transition in theoretical neuroscience without training the people and without having the professors who can actually train the students? So I think we have to look at physics. We have to look at how they completely changed their fields at the end of the 19th century by massively injecting theory in the field, by recruiting people with theoretical backgrounds and training them in physics. We have to do the same thing, and that's different from taking a physicist and bring them in neuroscience because now they have to learn the neuroscience, they have to learn cognitive science as well because they have to understand behavior, and that's very difficult. So I say we have to start with the undergrad. We have to rethink how we teach neuroscience today, just, and we have to follow physics. If you're an undergrad physicist, you're going to basically take 90% of theory courses. 
and 10% of experimental courses. Okay, so I don't know whether in neuroscience we should go to that extreme, but right now we're at 0% theory. So we have to start early on and we have to really start recruiting more theoreticians in our field. So COSINE was founded by effectively the first generation of computational neuroscientists. Uh, there were like a few big names, of course, that everybody knows in our field, Larry Abbott and Terry Sashnowski and Heinz Polinski, who really were early on, but you could count the number of computational neuroscientists on one hand, maybe at, mo at most two hands. So they really train the first generation of computational neuroscientists to which I belong. And we quickly realized that we wanted to develop theory, but we wanted to do it in collaboration with experimentalists. And I was very lucky to meet people like Tony Zador in particular, and Zach Manen, and other people who were experimentalists, but also understood the importance of theory. And so uh, together we organized workshops that were called Neural Information Coding a long time ago. Um, and about 12 years ago, we decided that we were ready to scale up, that actually uh, the new generation of people after us were even more committed to theory, and so we could actually envision a large uh, a conference where we, a large forum, because this is really what we're trying to create, a large forum where we can bring experimentalists and theoreticians to talk to one another, as opposed to a pure theory conference, which exists, there is computational science, but we thought that we wanted really both communities to come together and to get a chance to really talk about data and talk about how you analyze this and how you interpret this data.